A beautiful summer night at the ballpark with fun on deck for all. But for number one, seven-year-old Matthew Gillespie, tonight is extra special. I think it's going to take him maybe two or three seconds, and then he's going to it's going to hit him. Matthew's big brother Aaron is home from a year stationed in South Korea. As the coaches distract the little leaguer, Aaron steps up to throw his unsuspecting brother the first pitch. Come here. Matt didn't want to let go. I'm glad to see me. I'm not really a crier, but I was like, all right, I got to fight this one back. Got to fight it back. Matthew hit the ball and took a solid run to first with his family, his team, and most importantly, his hero watching. Little kids, they're always a pain in the neck, but at the end of the day, you still, you still love them. And he was always, he was always a good, good little guy to be around. We always played games, and, and he always looked up to me a lot. As soon as the inning was over, Matt found his way back into his brother's arms. I get to talk to him and, and hang out with him a lot. And there we go. Hey, what's up? Because <laughs> one hug just wasn't enough. Are you happy? Matt was speechless. And while he didn't have much to say, his tears and this grip tell the whole story. From Ladacia Talby's front porch in Walnut Hills on Dayton's east side, she sees it all. There's kids out probably to about 4 o'clock in the morning, like walking through the alleys, just wandering around. A time when these kids should be in bed. Police are now fighting back. As night falls and the curfew creeps closer, at 11, Dayton police strike. Officer Michael Saylor's a father, too. He takes us along on a sweep. We don't want to see our kids get hurt, so we don't want them to be on the streets. What's that up on the basketball court up there? Officers checking key spots like Patterson Park in areas where complaints are coming in. Do you guys car to come in here? Off Patterson, a hookah bar. Three girls inside a smoke shop where you're supposed to be 18 or older. The three girls were lying. All of them underage. One girl walked out crying. Police only trying to protect your kids. They loaded them up and hauled them to district headquarters where more girls were being brought in unhappy to see our camera. Don't record me. Inside a group of volunteers ready to write up tickets and call the parents. Some of them were under the understanding that their, their son or daughter was going to be at a friend's house uh, and they had no idea. And the parents had no idea they're now being held accountable with a fine up to $250. It's still their kids. They're still responsible. One dad had to drive up from Cincinnati. No idea the kids were in Dayton. I'm all the way I'm from Cincinnati. Off, so I don't feel like talking right now. Okay. In a little more than two hours, 18 kids taken in, a few with weed, but some parents sided with their kids instead of the cops. One parent actually told them to run from us next time. <laughs> Reporting in Dayton, I'm Nicole Gregg. Yeah, believe it or not, the semi had 2,200 pigs in it, and it's still kind of hanging on by a thread here. You can see it behind me sliding down the embankment right now, as we're told. The semi was carrying 22 baby pigs, and it took this ramp just way too fast, tumbled over, and all the pigs in it tumbled out into the woods. Now, we're told a few hundred of them died in the crash. Right now, dozens of first responders you can see here on the scene. We're talking farmers, park rangers, police officers, all working together to catch as many piglets as they possibly can. There have already been four trailer loads captured and taken to Greene County Fairgrounds, but there's still hundreds down there unaccounted for. It's quiet now, but for the last couple of hours, there's been nonstop squealing and shrinking because these pigs are terrified, and um, we're told they're stressing out right now, and that's presenting a whole nother problem. While these piglets are stressing, they overheat, and we're told, unfortunately, most of them are going to have to be euthanized because they're just not going to be, they're not going to make it. The river here is still pretty high as it snakes its way through downtown, but not really causing any major issues for the city sewers. Now, actually, that pumping station it just kicked on a few minutes ago, and I can actually see kind of a black, murky water being forced into the river here. Now, that pumping station takes water from the low-lying areas in the city and just forces it into the river, and it actually fails over the weekend. Still a mess out here. These are the steps to the house. The rest of the house is over here 
and neighbors tell me they're sick of looking at it. Some road crews came by to put some signs at the top of the street, but nobody has come here to address the real issue. Look, it's a total mess. It actually looks like an earthquake came by and shook up this road. There are a feet deep craters here, and it's a mess that neighbors say, you know what, they're afraid that they can't get to their homes, but even deeper than that, they're afraid for their children. Justin apparently made his way right through this path, climbed through this hole right here in the fence, and within a couple minutes, he was on the interstate. Ricky Wagner claimed the message Bible was in his chest pocket and it was hit twice with two different bullets. And to test that out, uh, or rather, police wanted to test that theory. So they put the Bible against the cement. They fired two gunshots into it and found the bullets ended up the exact same way as the bullets pulled from Wagner's book. They then did another test, this time against a soft surface, and found that the bullets should have gone through. I don't even know how to describe it. It was indescribable. It just put us all into panic. Abby Wilhelm was working at Waffle House when the eye of the storm passed by her window. I heard a big gust of wind and you see cars going by, trees going by, all of it. And then we all just kind of panicked. We had people coming in asking for band-aids and stuff because they were hurt and their cars had flipped. and. It's an unbelievable sound to hear. A cook watched his car fly from this parking lot a couple hundred feet and land on the other side near Fitworks, where David Rissmiller was on the treadmill. Everybody could tell it was like it would, it would feel like if a tornado hit. The awning came down, all the vents and the ceiling blew out. And everybody just screamed and ran to the back to the bathrooms to take shelter. It was terrible. It was really scary. David's dad and little girl were out in the parking lot. Uh, so I was scared to death. I ran towards the parking lot and saw cars flipping over and I just ran outside to find them. And their windows were smashed out and they were covered in glass, but nobody got cut. In the aftermath, there's lots to be cleaned up and lots to be thankful for. So it's going to take a while to get cleaned up. It's there's trees, bushes. Honestly, I'm just so thankful that they were OK. I'm just thankful that um, that we were OK, that my neighbors are OK. It's utterly ridiculous. This isn't the Wild West. We are in the heart of Clayton. We hit near the Clayton exit, and all of a sudden, my fiance said, we got a door open, and the chase was on. On his trip to market from Springfield to Greenville, Mr. Moo made a run for it. The interstate was a wreck. Uh, finally got traffic to stop, and we got the cow off, and uh, she went through a drainage fence. And that's how she got into these neighborhoods. And when I actually got home, the cow was coming across the yard and it went into our backyard and it's a big cow. For over three hours, Mr. Moo eluded capture by a full-fledged team of OSP troopers, Clayton police officers, and who says there aren't cowboys in western Ohio. We needed a horse, but that wasn't practical here with all the fences and stuff. <laughs> It's generally what we use. But a horse wasn't necessary, and the runaway steer finally met his match, taking his last no, breath of freedom. I know. Mr. Moo's wild adventure finally came to an end. The steer's owner, Gary Osborne, says today should have never happened, but a few weeks ago, tragedy stepped in. Wesley Culpepper, uh, Daniel Tittle, and our son, Charles Robert Luthie, were supposed to load the cow Wednesday morning to take it to market and they were killed in an accident. Osborne says he knows his trio of angels got a kick out of it. There are three young men in heaven that are laughing at me right now for, for, for an old man running after a cow. The fire broke out just after 7 p.m. on Rockford Avenue. The blaze already had a head start on firefighters, so they had to take a defensive position. Smoke from the fire could be seen as far south as Miamisburg, one man lived at the home, but he was not home at the time when the fire broke out, but told us on scene that the flames took everything he owned. What I'm going to wear tomorrow, stuff like that. My TVs, my flat screens, my game systems, all my clothes, all my mom's antiques, furniture, all that stuff. There's a lot of value in that house. No word on what exactly caused the fire.